Okay, back to Bahrain. Saudi soldiers descending into that tiny Persian Gulf island has angered many across the world, including people from Iran, Turkey, Iraq, and London, UK. Some have even said it may create a regional conflict. Here's George and his reaction to a caller who viewed the issue as sectarian and his positive stance on the king. Well, I'll just stop. It's best just to view it in this clip, which is classic George. Look, as, uh, as beautiful as a revolution sounds, not everywhere where you have protest, it is a revolution. There is exactly only a sectarian issue in Bahrain. What we have is Shias who want to overthrow the Sunni regime. The Sunnis will not allow it. Uh, well, uh, well uh, uh, enough. I, I think I've given you enough time. Uh, in English, we have a saying that I've given you enough rope and you just hanged yourself. You're either a member of the tiny ruling elite uh, in Bahrain, although if you were, you'd probably be in a casino uh, or a bordello in the West somewhere by now. So it's more likely that you're a stooge, that you're a factotum of that regime. The GCC force that you refer to as being in Bahrain, occupying your country, against an Iranian threat. I saw them kill two people just today. He was not an Iranian. He was not an Iranian threat. He was not any kind of threat at all. Now, you talk to me about a parliament which is a farce, which has no power of any kind. The Al Khalifa dictatorship rules your country. The decisions and the power belong to the Khalifa killers who've just brought foreign armies armed by America into your country to kill your fellow Bahrainians, who I remind you are Muslims, Mohammed, just like you. So American weapons fired by Saudi soldiers to kill Bahrainis who are Muslims just like you. And you have the nerve to come on television. But mind you, we can't see your face. Because if we could, shame would be written all over it. How can the descent of thousands of Saudi soldiers into Bahrain be explained, other than it being an intervention, invasion, and an act of war, as the opposition has called it? Bahrain's Center for Human Rights said a state-organized murder took place on the streets and UN Rights Chief Navi Pile on the takeover of Bahrain hospitals and medical facilities said it was a blatant violation of international law. The tiny Persian Gulf Kingdom of fewer than 800,000 people, Bahrain, is under attack. Bahrain this evening is under foreign military occupation. The invading land forces of the so-called Saudi Arabia and the American Fifth Fleet and they're combining in their vice-like grip to crush the life out of the freedom movement, the democracy movement in Bahrain. where Bahraini, Saudi and Emirati military forces are still out in force in an unprecedented crackdown on Bahraini protesters. It is very saddening, it is very uh, monstrous what we see. Um, you see people who are injured are denied access to hospitals. You see people are imprisoned in their own houses. Um, they, can't, they don't have food, they're starving in their houses. Um, you see an, a whole army attacking unarmed civilians. It is very saddening. If you're going to shoot down a man with his hands like this. <laughs> this is what these Saudi criminals are bringing down upon the masses. And what is being, what is being done essentially is the right of assembly and the right of free speech is being suffocated by tear gas produced by and paid for by the United States uh, in country after country after country after country in the Arab world. The West, particularly the United States, is behaving the exact way that we would expect it to behave. 
the United States has never supported democracy outside its borders, and one can even argue it doesn't really support fair elections within its borders. So why should we expect it to act differently with regards to Bahrain? At creating divisions, at encouraging invasions, and at encouraging civil rights violations. So yes, the West is behaving just the way we would expect the West to behave. And unfortunately, if we also want to be realistic, the GCC countries are behaving the way we would expect them to behave. Dictatorships will fight for the right to remain dictatorships, even if that means killing their own people. You're sitting at home wishing for an elected government instead of going out on the streets. Those are the words of George Galloway to a caller on his program comment. That's what the following clip shows. One of many instances of George's frustration of which, well, we'll be bringing more in this edition of Reality Check. You're not going to get an elected government as long as you've got a dictator. And you're complaining that the people giving their lives to get rid of the dictator are, you say, all Shiite. I happen to know that they're not all Shiite because I'm in touch with them on almost a daily basis. Many of them are not Shiite. But if, insofar as most of them are Shiite, shame on you that you're sitting at home wishing for an elected government, but not ready to go out on the street and actually fight for one. I don't know what's wrong with you people.